by now, I'm sure many of you have already heard about this story, but in case you haven't, um, Tariq spoke about this briefly in one of his live streams and Professor Black Truth did a whole video, a whole moment of truth video talking about this couple from South Carolina that went over to Uganda to do missionary work, I guess you can call it. And I say, whenever you see them white missionaries, you already know a red flag is probably about to go up or it should. But this couple's name is Nicholas and Mackenzie Spencer. And they basically went over to Uganda to quote unquote, take care of some children or adopt some children. And we already know what the children look like. And right now these two are facing the death penalty or could face the death penalty because they did some extreme torture involving these children. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to play two clips so you can get a little bit of an understanding about what it what's happening here. Then I'm going to read the article that's going to really break down the kind of stuff that they was into when it came to the so-called taking care of a child. A Ugandan state prosecutor told a court in Kampala on Wednesday that an American couple charged with torturing their foster child were a flight risk. The pair's lawyer argued they should be granted bail on medical grounds. Nicholas Spencer and his wife Mackenzie Lee Matthias Spencer pleaded not guilty after they were charged with aggravated torture of a 10-year-old boy in their care while living in a Kampala suburb. They have been remanded in custody since Friday. Prosecutor Joan Keko gave details of the alleged torture, saying that the child was made to sleep on wooden platforms with no bedding and was stripped naked at times. The un-American couple realized that their visas in, in Uganda had expired. They didn't have any work permits, and they were renting in the suburbs of Kampala, um, which made them a flight risk. The couple's lawyer said both the accused had ailments requiring care which could not be given in prison. Keko said there was no ailment that could not be treated in prison. According to police, Spencer and his wife came to Uganda in 2017 and a year later fostered three children, including the alleged victim. So you heard that clip right there. At first, I thought I was going to have to play the other clip, but that one right there pretty much told me everything that I needed to know. Now, the clip you heard was from 11 days ago. I'm recording this on December 26, 2022. That was 11 days ago. So that was well over a week, almost two weeks ago when that clip came up now fast forward to, to december 23rd 2022 which was three days ago it has now come out that these two could face the death penalty now before i get into the article itself from abc news let me just say when you heard that stuff right there that is absolutely insane they said that this kid was made to sleep on wood they were sometimes stripped naked. They were made to eat cold food or sometimes not even eat at all. Like they had them in all types of torturous conditions. And that's just what we know. Who knows what else this child was already go also going through and then had the nerve to foster two other children. So who knows that they were torturing them as well. And then try to say, well, we have some medical ailments and, you know, they that might not be able to take care of when we're in, like while we're in jail bullshit they came back and said that's fine because we have some uh, medical staff that can deal with any ailment so yeah we're gonna haul your ass to jail see what they're scared of is the fact that they could face the death penalty and hopefully if that if it comes down to it that's what they get now i'm gonna read this article an American couple living in Uganda accused of torturing their 10 year old foster child could face the death penalty if convicted of their latest charge. Nicholas Spencer and Mackenzie Lee Matthias Spencer, both 32, were arrested and charged earlier this month with aggravated torture, which carries a life sentence if convicted for alleged abuse spanning two years. This week, they were also charged with aggravated child trafficking, which carries the death sentence if convicted jo Joan Keiko. An attorney with the Ugandan State Prosecutor's Office confirmed to ABC News. The Spencers previously pleaded not guilty to the aggravated torture charge. The Associated Press reported they will be able to plead to the new charge once the case moves to a higher court. 
The two are being detained at a maximum security prison in Lazira, a suburb of the capital of Kampala, and were not granted bail after being determined a flight risk. The couple allegedly constantly tortured the foster child between 2020 and 2022, which attracted the attention of neighbors who notified Kampala Metropolitan Police, according to a statement from the Uganda police force. The child was allegedly locked in an empty room without clothes, food or water and in medical report show beating marks on his body according to Kampala Metropolitan spokesperson Luke Oyo I'm sorry Owo Sagire y'all got to forgive me this name you know it's kind of hard to pronounce the police received video evidence from a neighbor and nurse who were checking on the child a Kampala police source told ABC News the Spencers are originally from South Carolina according to Keiko they moved to Uganda in 2017 as, as quote-unquote volunteers. I have a feeling that they had ulterior motives. Most likely they did. The couple fostered three children in 2018, including the one they, they were alleged to have tortured, from an organization called Welcome Ministry in Jinja City, police said. The couple then joined a private company and moved to Upper Naguru, a neighborhood in Kampala, police said their work permit expired in 2021. So they weren't even supposed to be there. And that also, too, was mis mentioned in the audio about their visa expiring. They weren't even supposed to be there. They didn't even apply to get it um, updated so they could stay there more. They just stayed there. So they weren't even legally supposed to even be there. And they stayed like more times. I hope they throw the whole damn system at their ass. I hope they get everything. I want. Hopefully they do get the death penalty. And as you can see, the law works a little bit different over there than it did here. And that's the crazy part. Imagine had they did this here, they would have probably gotten some leniency. Now, Professor Black Truth had made a good point. When he was talking about this in his moment of truth, you know, say, for example, like, for instance, they get this kind of, you know, charge and they actually say get convicted. Who knows? The U.S. might try to squeeze some wiggle room for them to try to get them over here and see if they can work something out for them not to be punished as harshly or even punished at all. I wouldn't be surprised if they did do such a thing. But this is exactly why a lot of black people get weary when it comes to other groups of people, especially PC, when it comes to adopting or fostering black children, whether here or abroad, but especially abroad, because that's where they do it. I found that they like to do it the most. Because I guess that they feel like if they do it abroad, then there's not so much, uh, I guess, restriction or they feel like it's easier for them to do. This is exactly why. And I can't remember what African nation it was. I want to say it was Nigeria, but it could be another one. Someone can correct me in the chat or in the comments where it was one African nation that came out and said a few years ago, they are not allowing any white missionary to come over and foster or adopt any of their children. Because look at this situation right here. Look at how Charlize Theron treats her children. So far, the only one that we haven't really heard of that has adopted a child from over there is Angelina Jolie. We haven't heard any crazy stories coming out of her household when it comes to the child she adopted years ago. And I say years ago, I'm talking about years and years ago. Cause I think that I think that child is like in college now. So that just shows you how long ago that was. But they said, we're not taking the risk because we know how many of them operate, how many of them think when it comes to children. We, it's so many stories that they could tell. It's some it's stories that I've done before in the past where you've had uh, some of the white male missionaries go over there and they over there violating these children. They literally almost treat it as if it's a form of sex tourism. They go over and they find a small village that probably doesn't have much. And then they come over and say certain things off of a script to get them to fall for their antics. And boom, that's their way in. And then they 
do all types of crazy things and all kinds of wild acts with these kids. And then you have people like this who go over there and take advantage of the vulnerable and say, oh, we can give them a better life. They give you their children thinking that you're going to raise them properly and under better conditions only for them to be raised in a much worse condition than they already were in for some of them. So I do hope that they get the death penalty. It's what they deserve. It's what all of them deserve who commit acts like this, in my honest opinion. 